The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Oh, hello, everybody. Well, hi. Here we are, sweaty and pissed. Menopause and more. Yes, indeed. I'm Leanne Morgan, comedian and um, sweaty and... <laughs> I'm Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner, and I'm not pissed. I know you're not. That's good. I know. You look beautiful in your red lipstick. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> good to be back. Yes. You've been on the road a lot. I've been on the road. Yes. yes and I'm um, I'm going to be back on the road. But let me say thank you for everybody that's been coming to these shows and, and yeah. selling out these shows yeah. and all the girls in Cheetah Print. <laughs> I, I've had a ball. I've had a ball. It's been a wonderful 2019. Yeah. And so I, it makes me feel bad. Like people say, I drove, my husband and I drove from Utah to Phoenix because that's the closest we could see. And I feel like I need to go and give them gas money. I just, <laughs> I don't, it's very touching. Anyway, yeah. thank you to everybody. Nice. And there's more dates coming, yeah. com and here in the new year. In the new year. Wow. Yeah. So you have um, a lot of things coming up in 2020. So yes, and yeah. but I need you. I need you to. I need to lay on a table. <laughs> I need to look in me, your ears. You need apparently. to look in my ears, and there's all kinds of things you need to look at. <laughs> I, I would be calling you every day. Well, but goody. I know you got a lot on you. Yeah. Well, it's fine. You can call any time. Um, so we're going to talk about um, when young women have difficulty getting pregnant, what they can do before seeking uh, care from an infertility specialist. Okay. Uh, Susan, on the, our Facebook page, Susan did ask, what does someone do about when they're getting having trouble getting pregnant um, and they want some options before they go to an infertility specialist? Is there anything that can be done? So there are, there actually are some things. So... Um, and one of them we talk about all the time is, uh, getting an optimal weight. So if your BMI is over 25, weight loss will help. If your BMI is, is less than 17, which is pretty thin, yeah. uh, g gaining some weight will help. So having an optimal weight will help with ovulation. Yeah, and that's, I've heard that. Yet. Well, and that's part of the whole P P PCOS thing, the polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome problem is most women with PCOS ha are overweight or have obesity and losing weight will help their ovaries function better in terms of a f dominant follicle formation on the ovary so that you can ovulate. That The follicle is a cyst and it ruptures and that's what releases an egg so we want to form a cyst on the ovary but polycystic ovarian syndrome we form these teeny tiny little cysts that ne they look like a string of pearls on on an ultrasound and they just don't ever get big enough to rupture and release an egg so so weight management is a biggie um the other thing um you can do is uh, there are some medications that you can use. Uh, and these are medications that, you know, if your GYN or your primary care person is comfortable with prescribing them, they certainly can be prescribed by either one of those providers um, so that you don't have to start with an infertility specialist. But one of the ones we use a lot is Clomid. And Clomid acts on the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus, and the ovary to secrete more FA, FA, LH and FSH. Those are the hor pituitary hormones that tell us to secrete progesterone and estrogen. So when our hormones are secreted in healthy amounts and in balanced amounts, we form a follicle that releases the egg. So... Um, so that's what Clomid does, and we usually dose it uh, for five days, 50 milligrams a day for five days, and we start it on cycle day three, four, or five. And about 80% of people who take Clomid 
women who take Clomid um, will ovulate. So it's a pretty good success rate. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms, of, uh, in, in terms of the goal of ovulation. So 80% of those taking Clomid will ovulate. About 30 to 40% will, um, will get pregnant. So that's so this is a good place to start with women for sure. Yeah. And again, as long as your your primary care or your GYN is comfortable with prescribing it, that can be done at that level versus at an infertility specialist. Um when you say comfortable, is there why would they not be comfortable? Well, some people if they don't use Clomid a lot and they don't manage fertility issues, um, especially primary care, if they don't feel comfortable doing that for people or using that med, they'll say, go to your GYN or go to a fertility. Oh, I a GYN, a GYN is more likely to um, have experience in, in using Clomid. I thought you meant like there was a side effect or something. Oh, no, it's just that it's not really in their scope of practice. Okay. Is there anything that... Or any sign of pain? Well, the biggest oh, risks man. with that med um, are you can have multiple pregnancies. So you can have about, there's about a 6% rate of twins and about a 0.5% rate of triplets. And it can cause ovarian enlargement, which, I mean, that, that can be a really serious problem because when your ovary gets really big and wonky, it can twist the, the fallopian tube and, I mean... Yeah. It doesn't happen often, but it's it's definitely a risk of that medication. Yeah. Um so it it really fairly low risk. People don't have a lot of side effects. You're only taking it for 5 days out of the cycle. Cuz people um women uh, release an egg about every 24 to 35 days. Um and and typically they ovulate between it's like cycle day 14 through 19. Cycle day one being the first day of your period. So. I'd take a set of twins. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to have help. Yeah. But yeah. I'd take a set of twins. Wouldn't that be fun on the road? <laughs> well, um, I'd be in a big pair of pajamas <laughs> with my bra on the outside of my clothes. But I would. <laughs> I, I'm so thankful that. Yeah. I, you know, I can't do math, but I could get pregnant. I mean, I have always been never had you that know, problem. But you yeah. hear of people having yeah. trouble yeah. now. Is that is that a thing? I mean, are, are more young girls having trouble? Um, I don't know that that's increased in frequency. I think, again, some of it is the PCOS. We have we have a higher a rate of, of obesity in this country, and obesity affects your fertility. Yeah. So and a lot of PCOS, right? Yeah, in that there's a lot of that, and and PCOS is a a linked to diabetes, so it's a pre-diabetic condition. Um, so optimal diet, weight, exercise, all those things will prevent pre-diabetes and diabetes, and that will help fertility. So just being healthy, yeah. In terms of weight, diet, exercise, it's all we we keep coming back to that, I don't know, we? That's over and over and over and over and over again. I know. Yikes! Anyway, so we also can do metformin, which is a medication we use for type two diabetes, and metformin we also use quite a bit in PCOS. So unlike Clomid, which really um, increases the hormones that send a signal to make more hormones metformin really helps just by addressing the pcos you know it's not a direct hormonal relationship so much as as if you address the pre-diabetic state and the, the ovulation function happens more efficiently so so metformin okay. is an option we also use letrozole which um, is a medication a lot of our listeners might be familiar with we use it in breast cancer um day we take have people take it daily um for breast cancer because uh, it's an estrogen blocker 
Um, but you can actually use letrozole um, to induce ovulation in people with PCOS. Oh. So again, it's an off-label usage, um, but again, so the comfort level with different providers is different. Yeah. So, but those are a couple options. The other thing that I always look at, uh, you know, if, if young women are having trouble getting pregnant is what's going on with their thyroid. Do they have Hashimoto's? That can play a big role in being able to, or not being able to get pregnant. Um, I also look for um, gluten intolerance. Gluten intolerance and celiac disease can cause infertility. Mm -hmm. It can? Yep. Oh, my gosh. So Do see. people know that or just you, you know it? <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one on that. the earth who knows this piece of information. No. So, you know, when you think about all those things, it's sort of amazing that you just got pregnant, bing, bing, bing. I know, because I'm... Well, supposed to be eating gluten free and right I'm, I'm trying for the most part okay. i mean I, i'm it's hard when you're everything's hard on the road <laughs> i hope i don't get hooked on dope there's comedians out there eating yeah. fried mushrooms and drink you know those menus and i, I so i re, you would be proud of me i am in the back saying can y'all throw me some lettuce in a bowl? And I'm tr really trying. I don't eat all that. Oh, I, good. You but, look but, great. Thank you. You, you don't do. think I look tired? I'm tired. No. You well, look, I you have lost beautiful. some weight. You, thank you. you. Look... I have lost some weight, but I know I'm, I'm going to do more. I've been doing a video in my room on my phone. Chuck bought me an iPad for Christmas oh, so nice. that I can do. I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a digital um, membership to Jazzercise. And I can do it on my iPad, but I've been walking with Leslie on YouTube in my, you know, I really don't like a hotel gym. I don't know why, I know. but I just. There's something depressing about it. What is that? I don't know. But, I, and there's, you know, people have been lifting those weights and the flu's going around. So I've been in my room walking to Leslie and Leslie's um, pretty fun. She's on YouTube. Who's Leslie? It's a woman that has all these videos saying, <laughs> Oh, Walt I thought, with Leslie. I, th I thought and since you, she had one name that she must be so famous that I, I should well, know her. Uh, she's a pretty big deal oh, in the walking she? world. Oh. Yeah. So I walk on YouTube. You can you can put how many minutes. And so, you know, I wear this Fitbit. And I try to get in so many steps. So I've well, been good. doing that in my hotel room. Good. Because I'm too sissy to get out and walk. And, the, you know, well, I mean, I've been well, all over the well, you Phoenix, Arizona. You know, I don't know. Well, you I don't know neighborhoods. Out. and I don't. So, but I've been trying to, you know, do something every, because I'm in a hotel room and. I know. Did you, have you ever seen that commercial, this is a little off subject, which is unlike me, it's more like you <laughs> to do that. But, um, you know, have you seen that commercial with that exercise mirror? Yes. Not that you can take that on the road, but. I saw it on that's Ellen. What, that's a nifty. Uh, yeah, it's very you nifty. It your no idea how much trainer. it costs, but it's pretty Thousands, cool. Thousands, I think. Oh, well, there you go. And then you, then you get a membership. Uh, and they, and, but you can pick any kind of extra, you know, all different trainers and exercise. So I think if, if you're self-motivated and you're at home, it'd be great. Yeah. Chuck Morgan would do it. He's self-motivated like a Peloton bike. Chuck, get on that Peloton bike. I would hang panties from a <laughs> Peloton bike and use it as something to, you know, dry yeah. my clothes. Yeah. I'm not self-motivated. Yeah. I need, I need, I, I would rather be in a group and fun and i yeah, like me to do shows with a bunch of different people yeah so that's why i've been walking with leslie that's good yeah She's yeah so fun. this mirror thing is you see the trainer in the mirror and you see yourself yeah and you it's can have all your equipment there and yeah i know it's an empty well it's sort of like working with a, a video right yeah Ish. but but no? somebody's there to motivate you and all that it's, it's like the jetsons Everything's like the Jetsons. We're going to have a little <laughs> robot named Rosie. Isn't it crazy? It's crazy. Um, but anyway, I've been trying to do better. What were we talking about? We were talking about people <laughs> ovulate. Yeah. Well, we are talking about optimal weight, yeah. exercising, eating healthy, um, all the, and, and, glute, and, and gluten intolerance that that can cause um, yeah. infertility. Yeah. Uh, it can mm -hmm. gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I have um, one patient who never even had a period for most of her twenties, and um, tested her for gluten intolerance, and she was positive. And 
she started eating a gluten-free diet. She started having periods every month and now has two children. Oh, praise God for so her. So sometimes it's know. sometimes it's a lot simpler than we like to make it. You know, we're we're so but uh, all that being said, if you're if you've tried some of these methods that we've talked about so far and you're not successful and you especially if you've been trying something for a year it's worth at least having a consultation with an infertility specialist at that point because again with clomid 80 percent of women will ovulate on clomid so if things you know if you're not getting pregnant some other things need to be looked at because sometimes it's a, it's a, just a mechanical problem like you may have a, some scarring in your fallopian tube that blocks uh, the traveling of the egg to the uterus you could have endometriosis which can cause a lot of scarring and and um, again impeding the movement of the egg from the the ovary to the uterus um, so some people have what we call a bicornate uterus where they have actually like two uterus compartments together so it's sort of like a wall in the middle of the uterus oh yeah so there's some physical things that can happen or that people can have that make it difficult to get pregnant well i had my little daddy's um daddy had two sisters that never had children hmm. and they would say They've got a tilted uterus. <laughs> Lila and Margaret, they've got a tilted uterus. And so my sister would say, I bet I've got a tilted uterus. And I would be like, how do you, why do you think you've got it? But is that such a thing? Well, yeah. A tilted yeah. uterus? A tilted, well, a tilted uterus, usually people are referring to what we call a retroverted uterus. And an antiverted uterus is most, most people have a uh, uterus who are in the, who has an anti- Antiverted position, meaning the top of the uterus is forward, um, and or you could have the uterus going straight up into the body, or you can have the uterus tilting back to the toward your tailbone. So that's what we call a tilted uterus. is is a retroverted uterus that tilts back, and that's a normal variant, and it doesn't really shouldn't impact your ability to get pregnant the biggest impact that has is labor um, a lot of people feel that really low back pain in their labor when they've got a retroverted uterus um, so that's a that's a, actually a normal variant but a bicornate uterus where you basically have two compartments in your uterus is can be can be problematic in terms of getting pregnant do you know what your uterus is? <laughs> I'm, I think I'm antiverted. Yeah. You've got so, precious forest. I know. Had him in record time. Yep. <laughs> He's a joey. He is. Um, okay. So is there... Um, I don't know what I was going to ask. Oh, is there... <laughs> so, oh, what I was going to ask you was endometriosis. Yeah. Is, you know, when I'm 54, so mm -hmm. I remember that being a buzzword. Like, when I was younger, that, it mm -hmm. was like everybody was all of a sudden talking about endometriosis. Have they made, um, have they made progress with dealing with endometriosis? Well, you know, we have um, some medicines that help with severe endometriosis that basically throw you into menopause. Um, so it's a little rough. Um, but sometimes that um, may be the only option, something like Lupron. Um, for mild endometriosis, getting your hormones balanced in terms of progesterone and estrogen can help with mild and maybe even moderate endometriosis. Birth control pills can help with mild to, to moderate endometriosis. Really severe endometriosis, usually those people end up with a hysterectomy. Um, and there are some women, they have so much organ involvement. And just to tell the audience that endometriosis are endometrial cells, which are the cells that are in the lining of the uterus that, you know, we expel during a period. 
that get outside of the uterus and they attach to whatever organs, the outside of your uterus, your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, your colon, any of your abdominal organs. Um, so some people have such severe endometriosis that it's attached to so many organs that it impacts how they function. And, you know, I know of one case where um, it was involved the diaphragm and up into the base of the lung. And so every month when she had a period, her lung collapsed. So that that That's kind of severity. No, 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 no. And that kind of severity, really the only definitive answer is a hysterectomy. But mild endometriosis. Moderate. Yeah, hormone balance can help with that. Um, and um, oral contracept or hormonal contraceptives can help with that. Um, again, avoiding inflammatory foods. I mean, bringing down inflammation can help with that. And, um, oh. Every, all everybody needs to get off inflammatory foods. I know. So, yeah, but, um, so for mild to moderate, we can do some things, but, and, and even with moderate endometriosis, you know, one option always is to do exploratory laparoscopic surgery where they go in and ablate the, the lesions mm -hmm. that they, they just visualize the lesions and ablate them. The problem with endometriosis is you really can't see it on any kind of imaging, ultrasound, CAT scan, MRI. Um, so you really have to go in and do a laparoscopic procedure and just look in there and see what's going on. The only time you can get a hint that that is happening on an, on a image is on an ultrasound. If you have a cyst in the ovary that is filled with blood, um, it has a certain appearance. It's more opaque on the, on the ultrasound and it's what we call a chocolate cyst because it's a cyst full of blood and it's an endometrioma. So it's, it, it's a sign that there's endometriosis present. So oh. sometimes we'll capture that on an ultrasound, um, but otherwise you don't see it. Yep. You just got to go by symptoms. And yeah. And, and they're pretty classic. Like some people, if they have um, endometrial lesions on the colon, or the rectal area, they have a lot of pain with uh, bowel movement, and it typically worsens during the period. So, or abdominal pain that worsens during period the period. Uh, so, because basically, just like you get period symptoms, uh, you get those same kind of symptoms elsewhere. You know, like you have uterine cramping you will have symptoms with whatever organ it's attached to. Knock on wood. Yeah. I mean, I have been just as normal with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of my life I since know. I was 13 years old, normal periods, normal. That's good. I know. It'd be like <laughs> clockwork every 28 days, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's I, so I was good. like clockwork. I know. And it wasn't a heavy period and... Yeah. That's you're you're fortunate. I you're know. definitely fortunate. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Is that crazy? No. Not a period. I don't miss. A, I don't know. I just miss that. You miss being uh, fertile. Fertile. Because I should have had ten <laughs> children. I'm in and, love with them and take them all on the road with you. Well, I don't know about that. I because you know I've done this twenty years and and yeah. when I went to my first comedy club, which was in Nashville, yeah. And Brian Dorfman said to me, because I said, I want to be a comedian. And I had three babies already. My baby was a year old. And he said, you can't do this, Lynn. You you can't travel and raise these children in a comedy club. He said, Roseanne Barr did it. And they're messed up. He goes, she, they, <laughs> she had them in a station wagon in the parking lot. And and I and he was right. I mean, I have had to take a different route. Yeah. Because I couldn't have raised these children in a... So I did a lot of corporate private things mm -hmm. and all that and whatever I could. But um, and looking back on it, I mean, I begged Chuck for a fourth baby. And he said, I can't pay for all these kids. And I was worried about the financial part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, I, you know, there was a lot of money going out. And um, <laughs> so 
I, he said to me not too long ago, he said, I was wrong. We should have had a, more children because we're never going to have any money. What difference does it make? You know, by the time you get... <laughs> I'm married to you. Well, I'm a lot of eyebrows being waxed. But by the time you, uh, you know, pay for weddings and yeah. college and all that, he goes, so what? You know, we should have had more. Oh. But I know, you know, he loves a baby. Well, wait so, till you have grandchildren. You'll go, you two will go nuts over that. Oh, honey, I'm going to be at Dollywood. With a bunch of kids, honey. <laughs> you can go to if you want to. Okay, honey, I we'll will. take care of Forrest's baby. Take yeah. him to Dollywood. Dollywood season passes. What? <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to, I want to get off a of Diet Coke so I feel good. And we're going to ride the roads with yeah, a bunch of kids. I Let's know. Do it. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm, I'm game. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that pretty much covers most of what I think that uh, Facebook I hope that listener helps was them. asking about so i hope if, so too you know if you want children i mean mm-hmm. you know that would be rough not yeah. being able to yeah so it's always good to start by asking your primary care or your gyn if that if they can help you with that step before you go on to a specialist okay but before we go i want to thank forrest winsel our producer and the composer of our theme song, and Stephen Brown for the artwork. And I want to welcome to our studio my dear friends and sister, Ruth and Nancy. So they are here in town for to celebrate my birthday. And they're very pretty. Mm-hmm. Ruth and Nancy, honey, with the dangly earring on, both yep. of them, cute, yep. sweaters. good. I know. Welcome. Thank you. It's fun to have them here. I know. Yeah. They're going to celebrate your birthday. That's right. Happy birthday, Thank my you. darling. Thank you. You look 19. I do, don't I? You do. And especially <laughs> in your britches. I'll post something. She was in a pair of jeans, flare leg, darling. <laughs> darling in her pants. But she's doing body pump and... You know, you you really take care of yourself. You do a lot of exercise and you eat right. For the most part. I have my moments, but... Not much. Not much. You're probably doing 90, 10%, right? 90%, 10, Mm. 80, 20. And maybe 80, 20. Maybe 80, 20. You've got good habits. (laughs) I'm going to do better. I'm doing better. I'm doing doing better. better. I know I am, girl. I know I am. (laughs) I'm doing it because I want to feel good. You know, I got a lot going on. Yeah. I need to feel good. Have to have energy. Yeah. Well, so we will see everyone next or you'll hear us next time, but we're going to put the video on, right? We've got this videotaping today, right, Forrest? There will be probably yeah, big clips. I don't know if the whole thing will be on. I should have gotten my hair blown out, but <laughs> yes. But anyway, okay, well, till next time, yeah, my we'll darling. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Sweaty and pissed. Sweaty and